You're a man of action. You live life to the fullest, embrace your fears, and boldly chart your own path. When life knocks you down, you get back up one more time, every time. You are not easily deterred or defeated, rugged, resilient, or strong. This is your life. This is who you are. This is who you will become. At the end of the day, and after all is said and done, you can call yourself a man. Gentlemen, what is going on today? My name is Ryan Mickler, and I am the host and the founder of this podcast. I am glad, as always, I'm always glad that you're here joining us in what I believe is a mission that is critical in society today, and that is this idea of reclaiming what it means to be a man, a protector, a provider, and a presider. So again, I'm glad that you're here. If you're tuning in for the first time, this is our Friday Field Notes. You get to listen to me and my ramblings and some of the things I've been thinking about from throughout the week. Uh, If you have been here for a while, you know that we also have additional shows. We've got our show that's released each Tuesday where I am interviewing some of the world's most incredible men, New York Times bestselling authors, athletes, warriors, entrepreneurs, I mean, just men who are having so much success on every front. And I've got some amazing, amazing guests lined up in the next eight to 10 weeks. We're that far ahead, but I wanted to make sure that I am always providing you with the best content available to, again, reclaim what it means to be a man. And then you guys have noticed, we also released a third show every single week. It's called In the Trenches. And this is done by my good friend and fellow brother in the Iron Council. His name is Everett Bubba Downs, and he is interviewing ordinary, everyday guys like you and me about what they're going through, what they're working on, where they're succeeding and having victories, where they're struggling, and then giving some actionable insights and challenges to help you on your own journey. So if you would, guys, make sure you subscribe so you never miss a single episode. We got a lot going on. And on the subject of the in the trenches, I do want to ask for some feedback on that. Uh, We're about four or five episodes in. Uh, Send me a message on Facebook or Instagram, Twitter. Send me an email, Ryan at Order of Man, wherever you may be, and give me your insights. Give me your feedback. Let me know what you think about In the Trenches. Of course, let me know what you think about Friday Field Notes and our interviews as well. Uh, I'm always interested in hearing from you and what you like and what you don't like so we can continue to make this a very, very valuable resource, again, in a situation in an area that I think is much needed in society today. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, Before I get into the Friday Field Notes today, I've got a couple of quick announcements. What do we got here? Number one, uh, if you don't already know, we've got an Order of Man store. We've got hats, we've got shirts, we've got decals. I just put a new decal on my new truck. It makes it a truck when you have an Order of Man decal on there. Uh, We've got everything over there, battle planners, writer's logs. Uh, We've got some cool stuff. So if you are interested in supporting what we do as a way to say thank you, but also look good in the meantime, head to store dot order of man.com store dot order of man.com we really appreciate the support and i love when i'm driving down the road and i see somebody in his car or truck and i see an order of man decal on there somebody with an order of man hat or a shirt on uh, it's pretty cool to see that so again store dot order of man.com now the second thing I want to mention is our exclusive brotherhood. We have been really, really growing over these past two weeks. And I think it's a testament to what we've been doing in there and a testament to the 370 members who are sharing a lot about what we're doing. We just had a guest expert on a couple of weeks ago. Uh, As we get into this new month, we are going to be talking about all things finances, budgeting, investing, cash flow, insurances, investing in businesses. I mean, you name it. If it's a conversation that has a dollar sign next to it, we're going to be talking about it. Because I think there's a lot of men out there who don't quite know how to handle their money correctly, as evidenced by the debt they have, the limited investments, and the fact they just don't know where their money is coming and where it's going. So if you are interested in that, this is a great month to join the Iron Council, and we've got a great expert guest coming on later in the month. Uh, so if you are interested, go to orderofman.com slash Iron Council. Orderofman.com slash Iron Council. Uh, you're going to get the conversations, the guest experts all the information you need, the worksheets, and of course, the accountability and the brotherhood and the camaraderie that comes with it again. Again, orderofman.com slash iron council. Now guys, let's get right into this today. I want to talk about, I, I titled this Lord of the Flies. If you haven't read Lord of the Flies, I definitely encourage it. It's a fictional work. Uh, I'm not going to spoil the surprise for you, but it's very, very similar to what I think we might be experiencing or the trend that we may be on. Now, it may not be as in-depth or severe as what may be in Lord of the Flies, but certainly I believe that we're on this trend. I, I, I just think there's this this shift in society today where collectively uh, we've begun to give more credit to children than they actually deserve. 
historically, adults have made the decisions and been the influential party in the direction of relevant. And I say relevant because there are some things that kids, of course, have some influence over, but the relevant culture and policy in society. Now, in some sort of weird reality version, again, of Lord of the Flies, we've begun to allow our children to dictate the tone of the conversation and even set the framework for some very, very serious issues that all of us, children, adults, everybody uh, will be impacted by. So before I get into this conversation, I want to share a couple of things with you. A disclaimer, if you will, I try to put these in here because I know, inevitably I know, I'm going to get emails and messages from people who have misinterpreted what I'm talking about. So first, I do not believe that children should make the rules or set the tone of adult conversations. I just said that. But this does not mean that I don't care about our kids or have empathy or compassion for their perspectives or their experiences or what they're saying. All right, number two, some of our children are very intelligent. There's no denying that. And I'm not even saying that they're not. But what I am saying is that they lack the life experience that is required to fully understand the ramifications of their very, very limited experience. And third, I am not in the mindset that children should be seen and not heard. I listen to my children. I listen to the children in my community, for example, on our baseball team, the, com- the kids that I have a responsibility for. I listen to those kids every day. Every day I listen and I hear and I try to understand where they're coming from. But that said, I, as the adult, I, as the person responsible for the outcome of these kids and the situation, make the decisions. So those are my three disclaimers. I wanted to share those up front so we can have some framework for the rest of the discussion. Now, I'm looking around again in society. And when I see, for example, children yelling at their parents in the grocery store and then witness the parents actually giving into their demands. Or when I see children who have no clear adult role models in their lives make some horrible, horrible mistakes. And when I see children at marches and things like that without fully understanding the depth of the issues, I cannot help but think that we are failing our kids. So today, again, I thought I would cover some of the reasons that we ought to be very, very careful of giving children more credit than they deserve. But this isn't about whining because I've seen that on Facebook. I've seen that on social media. This isn't about attacking children. This isn't about complaining about what these quote unquote kids these days are doing. No, what I want to do is give us, you, me, the dads, the business owners, the community leaders, the men, some very practical steps that we, we can take to ensure that our children have a very clear path to run on. Because what's going to be happening is that we are going to ask them to lead one day, but that day just isn't today. So the first issue that I want to bring up is that children will naturally take the path of least resistance. They don't yet fully understand the law of sacrifice, which states that you need to give up something today, right now, in order to have a better tomorrow. This makes sense because children's perspectives are limited only to what they have experienced, which is not a whole lot, right? Since they've only been alive for a very, very short period of time. They look for the easy answer. They look for the short path. They look for the surface level solution without a full understanding of how that solution will actually impact them and others in the long term. Now, to be fair, I have to be fair here. Plenty of adults do this too. I've done this in my own life. And I'm certainly not suggesting that we take every adult's recommendation. That would be disastrous. But that said, adults have more experience to draw upon where they can look back on their life's choices and realize where they fell short and what choices served them and what choices hindered them. Kids just don't have enough experience and responsibilities and feedback. It's about that feedback and they don't have enough of it to understand those principles. So again, this isn't about whining and complaining. This is about solutions. So what is the solution? Well, number one, we need to get our kids involved in experiences where they can fail. That is a critical and an important part of life. Society says that we should not allow our children to fail. And this is a problem because it leads our kids to believe they're invincible and incapable even of failing. And this in turn, I think, sets them up for a false sense of reality. I've seen young adults buckle 
at the slightest sign of adversity simply because their parents, their adults, the leaders in their life told them they could do anything and everything and that they were special and wonderful and good at everything they've ever tried. Lie after lie is perpetuated to these children and the ego and the arrogance and the pride of our kids comes with it simply because they haven't been kicked in the pants enough. This is the exact reason that I choose to get my kids involved in competitive sports. I want them to know what it's like to fail and how to win and how to lose and how to use the feedback of failure, the feedback of failure to learn and grow. I want them to understand what sacrifice looks like and that nothing in this world comes free or, and this is important, free of consequences. Now, this leads nicely into my second point. And point number two is that children see things through rose-colored glasses. They see things how they wish them to be, not as they actually are. In short, I think children are overly optimistic and have a false sense of reality about how this world works. And that's obvious because they don't know how it works. And more and more, parents are failing to teach them how it works. And then you couple that with a bubble wrap that we insist on protecting our children with. And it's easy to see why. And, it, and at times, envy that youthful naiveness or ignorance. Look, guys, don't get me wrong here. I believe that having hope is a wonderful thing. But when it's predicated on delusion, it becomes very dangerous. When you see one perspective, you're missing the other 359 degrees that paint an entirely more accurate and realistic picture. So what's, again, the solution? Well, get more involved in your children's lives. Teach them the good. Teach them the bad. Teach them the ugly. You do no justice to your children by sheltering them from atrocities of the world. Talk with your kids about violence. Prepare them for it. How to protect themselves, uh, money, sex, drugs, and all of the things that you wish to keep them from. As adults, we keep these things from our children in hopes that they won't go near the things that will hurt them, but all we're really doing is attracting them to it even more. You cannot keep your kids from danger. It is inevitable. Unfortunately, I don't want it to be the case, but it is the case. So you can expose them to it, and and I say in controlled environments, you're not just going to go be reckless with your children, but you can expose them to it in controlled environments so they have a clear vision of the realities of life. Armed with that information, they're going to be more capable of making choices with all of the facts at hand, not just the simple ones, not just the nice ones, not just the comfortable ones. And guys, the third and final point I want to make is that children are selfish. They operate from a position of scarcity. I understand why when we look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, for example, we can see that humans will need to fulfill certain needs before moving on to these more, what I call advanced needs. Children are naturally insecure because they're in exploration mode. They're trying to make sense of the experiences and the stimulus in the world around them. So self-preservation becomes the priority over abundance for the other people that just happen to be floating around them. They simply haven't matured enough to lead others well. They can't even lead themselves well. And that's not a knock on children. It just means that they're, again, in exploration mode. They're learning, they're growing, they're developing. They haven't fully done it yet. And you couple that with the fact that our youth have very little responsibility and accountability in their own lives. You know, for the most part, there are no negative consequences for their selfish behavior. They're continually rewarded for taking care of themselves at the expense of others. And it isn't until they learn and see how operating as a team, whether it's in a family or sports or school or church or the neighborhood or community, it isn't until they see that and how that will serve everyone better than just themselves. So the solution on this one is is very straightforward. Give children responsibility. Give them a a pet to take care of. Uh, Make them earn the things they want. Make them responsible for an area or a project around the house. Have them earn their way. And please, please, for the love of everything, discipline your children when they do wrong. I know it's not easy. No one wants to enforce the negative consequences on their children's behavior. But you do them a disservice when you tell them it's okay to do dumb things over and over again. You hinder them. You're not helping them. 
Do not come to their rescue. Let them sit in the in the shame of their choices. I know it sounds harsh when I put it like that. It's not. It's not harsh. It's one of the most powerful learning opportunities and gifts that you could ever give to a child. So men, as I wrap things up today, I remind you that this is not a call to ignore what our children are experiencing or their emotions or their perspectives or what they're saying. It's actually a call to spend more time and attention on them. That doesn't mean that we have to bow down to their every wish and desire. It simply means that we act like the adults that we are asking them to become by leading, by example, and doing these hard things that we must in order to more fully prepare them for what is to come in their life. Now, I realize Lord of the Flies is fictional work, but I do believe that it impates an eerily familiar scenario when we allow the kids to be adults. Bottom line. They are incapable of doing so. That won't always be the case unless we ignore the responsibilities I'm talking about as men to lead with guidance and love and direction and clarity and paint an accurate picture of what it takes to become successful in life. Allow your children to fail. Teach your children the good and the ugly reality of life. Give them the burden of responsibility. Only through these continual exercises will we allow them to develop into the adults we'll one day be proud to follow. Guys, as I wrap things up today, I just want to offer a very simple thank you. Thank you for doing these things. I think for the most part, everybody listening to this, and I might be preaching to the choir, is is doing this, is stepping up as men and asking our children to shoulder some responsibility and to teach them the realities of life. I believe you guys are doing that. I'm honored to be standing shoulder to shoulder with you. This is something that is, again, much, much needed in society. And I see some of these trends and frankly, they scare me. And I think it's my job, which is why I've started this movement and this organization three years ago. It's my job to throw my hat in the ring, to do what I can do to become a man myself for me and my wife and my kids my neighborhood, my community, the people that rely upon me, but then also a call to ask you to do the same thing. There's not any one of us or 10 or a hundred or a thousand or a million. We need millions and millions of men in this fight, reclaiming what it means to be a man. And I believe that you guys are doing so. So again, a very simple thank you. As I sign out, guys, I will look forward to talking with you next week. But until then, take action on these items and become the man you are meant to be. Thank you for listening to the Order of Man podcast. If you're ready to take charge of your life and be more of the man you were meant to be, we invite you to join the order at orderofman.com.